David, how important is it that supporters can have a say in the running of the clubs? It's just hugely, hugely important and um, you know, it's, it's what a football club is really. A club is uh, a membership body, a club. If you're going to call it a club, then it's something that people belong to, not something that's owned. So if we can't have full supporter ownership of clubs, we have to have at least supporters involved and supporters direct obviously that's what its whole mission is is to help supporters be involved in the running ownership of clubs or at least to have a very very good progressive voice in clubs and they've done fantastic work over the years uh, in England and in Scotland and uh, you know it's really really important that both the organisation of Sports Direct and the work they do can continue and go from strength to strength. You mentioned in your presentation that it's important that, uh, that organisations like Sports Direct are funded properly. How important is that? Well, you know, it's not a great deal of money that's needed for an organisation like Sports Direct. It's literally to pay for the, the people, and it's not a great number of people who work for the organisation, the organisation and the work that they do. Uh, 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 really has uh, almost like infinite benefit they set help to save clubs they help to develop clubs they help to give clubs a progressive voice uh, it's, it has been difficult for supporters direct in England and Scotland to have proper funding right from the beginning in 2000 they were never written in with government funding and it's been difficult to have secure funding from within football um, but, but, but it is so important for that funding to continue just, just to pay for the people to do the work that they're committed to. Can I know what you think of some of, the, some of the real key positives of the supporters movement in terms of someone like some of the force? Well, I mean, the, the, the supporters direct, supporters trust model, which is where supporters uh, that they're, they're involved in a trust which is a mutual democratic organization in itself it's a very very progressive uh, they've always done good anti-racism work they've always been committed to community projects they're committed to a progressive form of supporter involvement in football and they've been involved in a tremendous number of of owning a tremendous number of clubs many of which like Portsmouth have been saved from administration from insolvency there's the inspiring story of AFC Wimbledon which started from from scratch when the old Wimbledon was taken to Milton Keynes and if you look at the benefit that's provided from just each one of those stories uh, it's huge and, and so when you look at the fact that there's a trust at just about every football club a senior football club in England and Scotland that very very many of them have directors on board that they have stakes in clubs and that several of them like Motherwell here and Hearts moving to supporter ownership and others uh, it's actually an amazing achievement and um, you know so, something's been said this morning that uh, you know sadly in our country and in the world uh, division is increasing now in quite a shocking way and the supporter ownership of football clubs is, is, is very much opposed to division and it's for the collective and it's really progressive work that's needed increasingly now. Okay, here's a question I've been asked to ask you from my, my colleagues down south. Uh, what do you believe the FA's role is to be in regulating English football and what do you see as the league's role to be regulating uh, league football in England? Well, the FA's role is to be the governing body of football and uh, I think it's found it, it always finds it very difficult to do that. Uh, and has done increasingly in modern times given the power of the clubs and the wealth of the clubs and particularly in the Premier League era um, but you know the Football League and Premier League's role is to run a good competition and also to regulate the financing and the ownership of their clubs which you know has improved over recent times partly as a result of campaigns and of progressive work being done by Supporters Direct, the Football Supporters Federation and that's uh, that's increased the governance, the good governance of clubs uh, but the FA's role is to and the Scottish FA's role is to govern football for the good of everybody who's involved with it which is difficult to balance the if you like commercialism 
the big money at the top of football for the good of everybody and it's a difficult mission in the modern in modern football which uh, I wouldn't say the FA in England has perfected just yet. You've been involved in this journey of fan ownership since the days before it was even a movement. How do you, you, you place the health of it today? Where, where do you think we are in terms of the health of the movement? I think it's really phenomenal when you sometimes you have to take a step back and think about how new it was. Uh, you know, it started from uh, really from Brian Lomax at Northampton Town who formed a trust uh, which had 8% of the shares and had uh, elected a director which was him on the board and you know it was an idea whose moment came and it's resulted in supporters trusts at just about every club, directors at many many clubs, stakes being held in many clubs and some clubs being owned by supporters so it's had a phenomenal impact um, but the actual impact of supporter ownership is limited to some extent by just how much it costs to buy a club and that's why it's been inspiring to hear about Hearts where there's been a gradual raising of money by supporters to gradually buy the club and make it a supporter owned club and there's a lot of expertise that's come in over their years in the best way to do that. So I would say that um, it is healthy, it needs sustained funding and commitment from within football and some commitment from the government to recognise the public benefit that's, that comes from such a progressive movement and then hopefully it will uh, move on for many, many, many more years to play a really good and progressive role. And it's inspiring around the world as well, it's, it's, it's famous around the world. The supporter ownership movement in English and Scottish football is quite a beacon.